Hey guys, so I'm back again with a second video. Yes, it's been a long time, but for us it really doesn't. Team Sickness over here has not been doing so well. We've had Lizzie, Tim, uh, and also my other housemates getting sick. We've all had the same same virus. It's been a lot of blocked noses and sore throats. Not great preparation for WOC, which starts in one week. But we're all back up and running again. I've had two really good days of training now, yesterday and today. And while we were sick, we were going out to the forest a little bit, getting some experience in the terrain. So what I wanted to do in this video is take you through a few of the training courses that we've done, some of the uh, interesting points about the terrain and some of the issues that we've been having. I've got lots of good GPS of me making plenty of mistakes and also a few of me going really straight. So what I wanted to do mainly in this video is go through the training that we have been doing, talk a bit about the terrain, the forest, the difficulties that we're having with the map, especially talk about the physical nature of the forest because that is really different to anything that we have in New Zealand. And I'll combine that with some screen capture from the computer. We can look at quick route, have a quick look at my GPS routes. Also in the description is a link to my Doma, my maps are up there, so have a look, blow your mind on these maps that are way different to anything that you'll be seeing back in New Zealand, and I'm certainly finding them really challenging. Tim and Lizzie, who have both been living in Norway for quite some time, are a lot more confident in the terrain than I am. Tim especially, we did the last two trainings side by side, and he's miles more confident than me in the terrain, the one we did last night. I, I just ballsed it. I lost like probably eight minutes would have been out of like a 40 minute course. So I was a bit down after that, but got back out today and had a really clean training this morning. So we, I am improving quite a lot in the terrain over here, getting much better the more time I spend in it. So a big difference between those that have been here just a month like me and those that have been living in Norway and training on similar terrain much more frequently. Tim's done training camps in the area before and Lizzie's been living right here. So you can see the advantage that people get from living over here. Uh, the best that I can do is come over early and get more time in the terrain and get as good as I can. So having a quick look here at this training course that I did while I was sick last Tuesday. Um, just, just getting sick, so I wasn't feeling too bad and was running pretty good. This is the second video that's gone up with the, the video camera in the forest. So you can see some really vague areas. Uh, this bare rock is, shows approximately where this bare rock is in the forest. It's pretty loose. Not like some of the stuff that we've experienced in Australia where it's really obvious what's bare rock and what's normal forest. The bare rock over here is a lot more scattered. It's covered in moss and heather. And different mappers are presenting it quite differently. Quite often it's done with the yellow instead of the grey. This one here is only done with the grey. So these, these vague areas are quite quite hard I think because it is a lot harder to run in a straight line than in the artificial forest that we're used to in New Zealand so I'm working really hard on trying to keep my direction strong with my compass still finding it quite difficult uh, you can see my exit out of two not really getting that quite so well these little pits and all the stony ground is all artificially mined uh, it's all Pretty, pretty old, but you can see all the square chunks. Here's a quick look at a video from another map where you can see, see the stony ground and all these chunks of rock that are just left there. It's really nasty to run on, so ideally you're avoiding it, but it is quite obvious and it is quite visible. You can see the forest is quite open in places and you can see quite far. So back on this training course, uh, here I'm getting it quite good, I'm running in a really nice line. These cliffs here are, are big cliffs, you really notice them. Getting down them is relatively easy for most of these, but getting up is a bit harder. 
they're pretty steep, most of them. And you can see coming down these cliffs at the end, it is pretty rough, some of these hillsides. There's a lot of rock on the ground. Here's a sprint training course that I've done right here locally in Halden. So I just had to run down the road 10 minutes, start this off, and boom, there's a sprint training course so easily. Done most of the old towns around here are mapped. Uh, I think it's mo mostly easy compared to what we used to. The route choices are a bit bigger. They can be made quite tricky with, for example, uh, these fences. So you have to check your descriptions very carefully to know what side of the fence the stuff is on. What we're expecting for walk is probably more of these longer legs looking at uh, the Swedish sprint style. You're, you're having more of these longer legs with <clears throat> route choices that are made up of buildings and fences and out of bounds areas. Most of it tends to be a bit easier than I think some of the sprints that we have and race on. But I think, I think that's good for me. I tend not to handle the very intense sprints at the really high pace. So I think the Swedish style suits me a little bit better. But apart from that, they're not too complicated. It's a quick look, what, what are the, what, what's the fastest way around, left or right. And sometimes a bit of weaving through the middle. <clears throat> you might notice this fence here in the middle. The, across the road, uh, obviously not a natural place to have a fence, that's an artificial fence. Obviously for the training they didn't just put up uh, a fence for the training course, but we are expecting to see artificial fences at Wok, where they will, because the roads are closed they will put ro additional fences across roads, and it can be quite hard to see on the map. This particular one tricked me, I didn't see it at all, heading to 16 and I'd come through the park and up the road, I got to the road before I saw it on the map and then had to pop around the bottom and up and into it and Tim's done a similar thing uh, misreading this area here saw the artificial fence, it's obviously artificial because it's across a road uh, and ran around instead of seeing that there's actually a gap here so it does play a little bit of havoc with, with your brain when you see these very unnaturally placed fences what we are hoping to see is they use big pink out-of-bounds stripes across the road. It's a lot easier to see. Back to the forest areas, I wanted to talk more about these slopes with the little knolls and hills. It looks pretty crazy, and it is, especially when you consider that most of it is broken chunks of bare rock. And the shapes here, it's not really gouged out of the earth. The shapes in the land much more to do with how the rock's sticking out of the ground and some of these sharp shapes are, are really just the edge of a rock and it looks like a cliff so you can see there's a little cliff line here on the side of the spur and it probably looks like a cliff half the way down this little re-entrant here and much the same whenever you see these straight edges straight contours it is likely to be quite a sudden drop because it's a half cliff, not high enough to be mapped as a cliff, but uh, it can be really tricky and I had a lot of trouble in some of these areas er earlier in the week trying to discern what is a cliff and what isn't and once you lose contact it's really hard to relocate because you're not sure whether what you're looking at on the map is black or brown. So looking at this video here you can see the open areas as, as I'm running along this bare rock, you can see the heather this, we're not entirely sure how it's going to be mapped. Different mappers seem to be doing it a bit differently, but there's going to be a mix of grey and yellow, representing the bits that are purely bare rock as the grey, and the bits that are a bit more mixed as yellow. Well, that, that's what we expect anyway, based on the previous maps from the Walk map maker. <laughs>
this time it's a massive pile of rubble. Some other things we've found running in the terrain over here. I think someone's going to break a leg at walk. So I've had three occasions where I've put my leg down quite a big crack between sheets of rock. And the first one I did, here's the video for it. Oh, yeah. oh. shin. There's a massive hole there. Ooh, Skin is missing. Ooh. Ouch. So that was Lizzie going down right after me too, in the same crack I think. And that strained the tendons on the back of my knee. It was totally maxed out as my legs stopped and my body tried to go over the top. And that, that was pretty scary. That could, could have been quite close to, I don't know, weeks, months off. We've had a few, I know a few orangeers that have gone over the top, broken everything in the, the back of their knee. So that's a, that's a little bit scary. And happened again to Lizzie and I today again on separate occasions we'd gone I went down into a hole over my knee so fortunately my wasn't going to break the tendons in the back of my knee but uh, certainly hurt my thigh a lot when I'd gone down the crack and fell forward basically most of my momentum just been stopped by my thigh and you just you sprawl and there's these cracks all the time when you're running on the bare rock areas you can see the cracks as you run over there's these just gaps and you can see the see them as they disappear you can see the ground as it disappears down these cracks and you can think of them in the bare rock areas okay you can see them but when we're running through the heather and blueberries you can't see these holes and that's how it's happened is we've been just happily running along through the through the bushes and then my foot's gone straight down and I've hit the deck and I've got my leg in a hole so that's it's a bit dodgy like all our interior, it's supposed to be ruthless, and I like the fact that um, someone, someone's going to get hurt, hopefully, and it makes the whole thing a lot more real. You know, you're pushing against the forest and taking a few risks, so um, that's really cool, but this is particularly rough. I've done a lot of running in Sweden and never felt quite the same as this, uh, having stepped in a few of these holes already. So the plan for the coming days, I'm off to Oslo tomorrow, I'm racing Nighthawk, racing the first leg, so the mass starts at night time with a few hundred other people running off into the forest in the dark with massive headlights. That'll be a really cool experience for me, the terrain is not so relevant to walk but I'm really looking forward to be able to and that to make this a more complete trip every year. We're coming over to race, but also get experience. We're coming over to do the big race, that's walk. But that doesn't mean we can't add in these other little races. Um, instead of just being so focused on the one race, we have to think about future a bit more and also the rest of our training. It's really valuable for us to do these other big races. Also doing a world ranking event two days after on the Sunday in Oslo. And that should be uh, the last fast race I do before racing walk at the end of next week. And there'll be a few other fast sessions next week, but racing this weekend should be uh, probably the last really hard hit out in, in a forest uh, before walk starts. So really looking forward to racing Nighthawk this weekend. Thanks for listening to the update. I hope it's reminded you that we are still here and especially now we're back training. More team is arriving over the next few days and once we've moved in as a team next week there will be more of these videos. Please like and share these videos, subscribe to the channel and you'll see more updates coming over the next two weeks from the New Zealand team. See ya!